Okay, and we're back once again. EPA 3 in week 5. This is our ninth online session. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes, the first session for week 5 in EPA 3. We're still in the coronavirus era. My PowerPoint's a little off-centered. Let's straighten it up a little bit. And we are ready to go. Okay. This week on Wednesday is April 15th, which is the parliamentary elections in Korea. And I really hope that all of you guys take advantage of your citizenship rights to go vote. Me, I can vote in the local elections in Korea. The elections for mayor, city council, provincial governor, and uh, provincial council, because I live in Kyungtangnamdo, Miryang Shi, is an ordinary city. So uh, I vote for the mayor and the uh, city council and the uh, provincial council and the uh, provincial mayor and the uh, uh, superintendent of education, the Gyogam. I think that's right. Is that what you call it? Uh, for the province. But I don't vote for the national parliament and I don't vote for president. I do that stuff in the U.S. And I did vote for our primaries in California back in... Uh, when was it? March? Yeah. March. And then I can vote for our presidential election in the United States in November. Because I'm a U.S. citizen, but I'm a Korea permanent resident. Anyway, <coughs> that's an outline of that. As I mentioned last week, I'm not going to do these long uh, reviews of previous weeks because... I feel that's not my job. That's not what your boss is going to do. Your boss is going to expect you to take notes and keep up with them. And in my class, I do require you to take notes. And that is part of your job. And I grade your notes. And in fact, this week, I'm going to take a look at your notes. So we'll get to that right now. Let's just go ahead and save that and close it and we are on the administration now I need to move this up we can see that this is week 5 it's very interesting how my different classes format differently but you can see that at the moment there are no videos listed for week 5 that's because hey hey I'm doing it right now right Okay, so, um, in week five, we have a few things to look at. We will look at a notice, which is available from week four, so we don't have to look at week five. We will take a look at some of the assignments we've had. We'll take a look at the uh, e-board, which uh, nothing is going on. And we'll look at the Jayuki Shipan. We'll start at that right now, and we'll see that nobody has done anything here. And that's okay, I don't grade it. As I said, it's your spot. If you write something, I'll look at it once or twice a week uh, and then decide whether I want to answer here or answer in another place. But anyway, there's nothing there. And if we take a look, this, this doesn't show in week five because again, I put it up two days ago in the middle of week four and this system is weird. It counts the date that you upload it. There's no... Uh, date marking for notices so it doesn't actually appear but this is important you want to take a look at it update for notices and I'm just going to walk through with you the university has sent messages saying they expect to start face-to-face -face classes on campus in the classroom face-to-face face-to-face classes May 4 but that could change now to be honest, back in February, in February I told people that I didn't think we would be back at school 
before May 1. Okay, I wasn't thinking exactly Korean calendar, just easy number, May 1. And then, you know, school said, okay, we're going to delay to March 16, and then they said, okay, we're going to do online March 16, we hope to be back face-to-face, -face, da 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 And I said, well, you know, it could be possible that we do face-to-face -face April 15th. April 15th is easy date for me because it's election day in Korea, it's tax day in the U.S., April 15th. But I don't really think so, I think May 1. Well, of course, the school then said, oh, well, we hope to have classes face-to-face -face April 13th, which is a Monday. I wasn't thinking calendar, I was only thinking numbers. But that didn't happen, now they're saying May 4. I think, right now, as we speak, this is Sunday night, uh, actually, it's technically Monday morning, it's after midnight. Oh my gosh, I gotta go to sleep. Um, I think that it's maybe 50% odds, 50-50, that we will start face-to-face -face on May 4. The school really wants to. So that's our official notice right now, is that we've been face-to-face May 4. Now, that creates a kind of problem, because the original midterms week for this revised calendar, starting March 16, we're supposed to have midterms May 4. But that doesn't make sense if we're just now coming back to school. So, the school gave us permission to change our midterms. And I plan to do that. So right now, the plan is we will delay our midterms. Instead of having midterms on May 4, which is week 8, right now the plan is to delay midterms until May 11. That gives us one week of face-to-face -to, -face to kind of figure things out, talk, and, and make final decisions. We can change that. That's the current plan. I have to make a notice and, and inform my students, the school said, this week. So that's the current plan. It can change again, if you want. The midterm should be 20% of the grade in this class. I think the final exam is 30% and various other things. We can look at the syllabus to find our grade. But we can change the points system also. We will talk about this. In a Zoom class, we will talk more details about testing. All right? We will talk more about testing. But not tonight. The midterm test, like the final test, is one-to-one. -one. So honestly, we can do one-to-one -one online just as easily as you coming to my office. We just have to schedule the times, and people check in on time, etc. We can do that. We can do that on Zoom. We can do that on Kakao. There's lots of possibles. So we will talk about this, but not tonight. Okay. I want to remind you that we do have a Zoom class this week. That um, election day is April 15, but our class is April 16, the day after election day. Our class is at 10:30 a.m online so no problem so we do have a zoom class that's that I expect you to vote all right so let's go back that was our update now it's midnight the deadline for turning in a company introduction is April 14th no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's closed. I hope you did it. This is my grade date. Uh, the the turn-in date is now closed. So I hope you did your business introduction. There were two: the company intro, uh, uh, the company introduction, recording, and written. Right? Black them. Closed. I'll be counting those. Uh, I want to tell you that. The CTL is not very professor friendly when it comes to turning in homework. Uh, I've used many other systems that work much more nicely. This one is a pain in the tail. The undungi. It's not very nice for professors. 
So uh, I will get to that. But, uh, I haven't got to that yet. Two new assignments for this week are listening logs and notebooks. So let's take a look at listening logs. I gave you a design for listening logs, a suggested design. You don't have to follow it exactly, but basically tell me the date that you listened, tell me the time that you listened, tell me what you listened to or watched. Example, uh, I watched a Daffy Duck cartoon. Uh, uh, I think it's called uh, Merry Melodies or Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes is the name of the series. Maybe you watched it on TV, maybe you watched it on YouTube, whatever. And then tell me what happened. So, for example, uh, Porky Pig is hunting Donald Duck with a gun. Right? And that's enough. Six, seven, eight words, whatever. So what I want to do is to see your listening log to make sure you're doing it, to make sure you're doing what I want. It gives me a chance to give you advice. The easiest thing to do if you're writing your listening log in paper is just take a picture of it. If you're doing it electronically, send me the file. Now it can be a challenge if your listening log is broken up over three or five pages because you can only upload one file. So if you have two or three pictures, you need to make a zip file or combine the pictures into one bigger picture uh, using Photoshop or wh however it is you want to do it. I can only take one file on this. So you want to show me picture or pictures of all you're listening. The assignments do not later than Sunday night, 11.55 p.m. April 19th. Actually, technically it's due April 19th at 11.59 p.m. But uh, don't chase the clock, because if you're late, you're late. It won't take it. I won't accept it. Just like your company boss will say, give me this at this time. Don't be late. Trying to teach you good business skills. Don't be late. And the other assignment is a notebooks check. Kind of similar to the listening log, in that I want to see that you're taking good notes, that you're keeping up, because you can use your notebook on your test, and I grade your notebooks. Your boss is not going to give you a thousand handouts. Your boss is going to talk in the meeting and expect you to take notes. So I want to see your notebook. You can just, if it's written, just take a bunch of photographs and zip them into one zip file and share with me the zip file. Uh, I think you have a 100 megabyte limit. I'll have to double check that, but you do want to make this as small as possible. If you save giant file sizes, you know, uh, 10 megabyte photos on your phone, maximum quality. Well, dial it down. Turn it down to a to a lower quality. Because I'm not looking for a uh, you know, beautiful portrait of you. I just want to be able to see your pages. So make it small enough, simple enough. I can blow it up on my computer to make it a uh, bigger size, as long as the quality is okay. Uh, if you're keeping your notebook in an electronic file, just send me the file. Again, this is due not later than Sunday night, 11.55 p.m. I don't take late. Uh, in terms of a notebook, I want to see your notebook. So if you're late, you can send it to me outside just so I can give you good feedback, but you don't get the point. All right, and there are no new uh, materials on the board. Previously, I uploaded the customer client citizen Im image. I'm just going to pop it open real quick. Uh, it's, anyway, it's right here. I don't need to save it, I just need to open it. Um, just click O for open. And, uh, it needs to be smaller so you can see it in this. Okay, we talked about this, so I don't need to do much more. It's up on the Hacksaw Chario, you can always look at it, you can print it out, you can have it in your hand when you do the interview. The midterm test, because I could ask you. That's enough advice. I've told you. There's nothing new on the Hacksaw Chario uh, on the e-board since that. So that's done. 
By the way, if you're wondering, I upload these recordings to YouTube because the university server doesn't want these giant video files. So we upload the files to YouTube and then um, we copy the link from YouTube into the uh, CTL system where you watch the videos. So if you want to see my videos, you can find me and then just uh, find my videos. So you can find me. My name is Robert Dickey, R-O-B-E-R-T-D-I-C-K-E-Y. Um, that should be good enough. You can look me up under R-J-D-I-C-K-E-Y, the same beginning for my KMU email address is the same at the beginning for my uh, YouTube channel. Because YouTube is under Google and my Google beginning is RJ Dickey. But please don't send me emails to, to Google because then I have to go find them. Uh, but for if you want to find the videos, if you want to play them again, if it's not convenient on the university system, you can find me in the in the YouTube. However, you don't get campus points for watching videos on YouTube, so be sure that you watch the videos on time through the campus system because we count attendance. And there have been a few students who got text messages from me this week saying you're missing our classes. You're missing our Zooms. You're missing our recorded classes. This is attendance. Every time you miss, it's minus one point. So please, don't forget that. Now, I need to leave this open because I am actually... Uh, well, it says it's done. So I can leave that for now. Let's just take a look. I don't want to use that. I want to use that. That's my thumbnail. Okay. Save. Alright, that's my preferred thumbnail. And we can close that now. So, um, we can close that now. We are now looking at the book. And I'm going to shrink this down and lower it down. We're now looking at the book, and I don't actually need this this quite this big, so we'll make it a little bit smaller. We are going to skip a little bit at the moment. We last did page eight. Oh, I gotta go more. There's a lot of stuff here. Ah, so we were talking about the dress code. I'm wearing a gray shirt. It's very similar to this man's gray shirt. Uh, the, the lighting is different here, but it's actually a gray shirt. My gray shirt is very similar to the gray shirt that man's wearing. It's just the lighting is different. And it's a button-down collar. Notice that his collar has buttons, and mine does too. If you look up here, how can I do this? There is a button. Uh, it's hard to make it visible on the camera but there's a button right here so these colors don't come out they they stick down they're button so we call it button down to down 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 up down button down collars but his button down collar has no tie and I'm wearing a tie in fact I don't think you can see this but it is a Gamyong University tie one of those nice little gifts that well here it says on the back can you read that Gamyong University uh, one of those gifts from the university. Um, 
Eh. Different way. As I said, I, I tend to wear a tie because it helps me remember that I'm a professional. I'm working now. It's not playtime. It's work time. And I especially need it now because my clock, my real time is 12.32. And I think we call that AM, right? Anyway, it's 30 minutes past midnight. I'm tired, but I recorded a session earlier today. And the encoding failed and the whole thing crashed and I had to do that other recording again. That was for EPA1. So I'm about 90 minutes behind on everything right now. I'd hope to be done by 11. All right, and then we had this video, uh, this, this, this email, and I mentioned it in our last class. So let's jump ahead. And in our last class, we talked very quickly. I talked about this um, reading. You like Thai food, don't you? Okay, we didn't do part two. And so I want to try to play that right now. That will be my audio 11. My audio numbers are different. Page 8, Exercise 2. Listen and complete the conversations. A. This is your first visit to New York, isn't it? Yes, it is. B. Okay, so you notice there is no uh, rising voice, even though it looks like a yes question. It's your first visit to New York, isn't it? There's a question mark at the end. He could have said, this is your first visit to New York, isn't it? And as we said in the Zoom, that would mean there was a lot of uncertainty. But since he said it with a falling voice, this is your first visit to New York, isn't it? It sounds like he's quite certain, and she said, yes, it is. All right, so let's just fly through this. It's a wonderful city, isn't it? Oh, yes. There's so much to see and do. Isn't it? See. You're in the computer industry, aren't you? Yes. What about you? Aren't you? Not quite sure. D. That was an excellent meal, wasn't it? Delicious. I love Mexican food. E. You live in Buenos Aires, don't you? Yes. Have you been to Argentina? F. You don't follow soccer much in the U.S., do you? No, but it's getting more popular now. Now, I want to point out that there is a grammatical problem. I guess it, we call it grammar in this case. When we talk about how people in different parts of the world use English, we usually talk about the accent being different. Oh, they have a funny accent. But there's another side of things, and we often call this world Englishes. Englishes. E-S. Plural form of English. World Englishes. And that suggests there's more than one type of English. Well, we know that Americans and British talk a little different, and the grammar can be a little different. Um, and Australians talk a little bit different again. Their grammar tends to follow British, but not perfectly. But then when we talk about people from, say, India, we often laugh at their, at their pronunciation because they talk like this. It's very musical. But they often will use older grammar forms things that we don't do so much, they'll use the perfect tense, PP, present perfect, past perfect, more than a modern American or modern British person would. Still, we have other forms of English that diverge. And for example, in Singapore, you know, Singapore has four national languages, English, Mandarin Chinese, Putonghua, the, the what mainland China calls standard Chinese. And also the Malaysian language, Bahasa Melayu, and also a dialect from the south of India. They have 
quite a few people from South India there. So they have four national languages. And then in Singapore, they have a version of English which they call Singlish, which is kind of similar to the idea of Konglish or Janglish, meaning it's not standard form. People kind of laugh at it. Uh, a lot of people will use it, but everybody agrees it's not proper English. Okay, fine. However, there is still another form of what we would call Singapore English where there are some differences. They use some some uh, words that are lo entirely local that become standard in the Singapore version of English, just like American English uses some words that the British English don't use. The British use some words the Eng Americans don't use. Then there's this thing that's kind of in the middle. It's still treated as Singlish, as not standard, but it's becoming more and more common. And not only in Singapore, but many countries. And that is using the tag, isn't it, that does not match the prior verb. So, for example, letter C in number 2, here... You are in the computer industry. You are in the computer industry. Art you is standard English. But in Singapore, they would say, you're in the computer industry, isn't it? They use isn't it for all their tags. D, that was an excellent meal, wasn't it? Or what about Singlish style? That was an excellent meal, isn't it? Okay, so please understand, generally that's considered non-standard, that's wrong grammar, but more and more people around the world are starting to use this simpler grammar. And it's it's standard for them. It's, they don't feel that it's wrong, it's just a simpler grammar. I don't want to hear you using Singapore English in this class because we're trying for a more global form. I don't want to say that it's wrong, but I certainly don't want to say I'm teaching Singlish or I'm teaching Singapore English. What I do want to do is open your ears and make you aware that people, some people do use different forms of English and just because it's not what your teacher taught you doesn't mean it's bad or wrong. So keep your eyes open for that. And let's roll the page. Now the next page, oh, I'm going to have to move things a little bit, which is okay. It's hard for me to, oh, this really isn't working. It's being a challenge. Um, how am I going to do this? I guess I'll do it this way. Ah, I had forgotten. That's my apology. We are at the end of this book. As I said, you need to get the book. So I don't have book to share with you. You just have me. For this class. And that's too bad for you. If you open your book, you'll see on page 9 there's a dialogue. And we'll probably work on this dialogue in our Zoom class. And on page 10, is a listening and I really hope you have your books as I told you you need because we're gonna play that recording I will share my book with you somewhat this way it says oh, can we get this are you going to Sao Paulo on business? Let's see if I can get this closer with if it will be in focus. Uh, that looks better. 
Are you going to Sao Paulo on business? Listen to the conversation. Look at the pictures. Who's speaking? Number the pictures. One, two, three, four. All right. And the pictures are numbered A, B, C, D from top left to bottom right. So this is my recording 15. Page 10, Business Connections. Listening. Are you going to Sao Paulo on business? Exercise 1. Listen to the conversations. Look at the pictures. Who is speaking? Number the pictures 1 to 4. Conversation 1. The meeting will start in a few minutes. We're waiting for two more people. Fine. You're in the Tokyo office, aren't you? Yes, I am. How long have you been there? Only a few weeks. I took over from John Park. I see. How's it going? Fine. We're very busy. Canton's still there, isn't he? He's an old friend of mine. Uh, yes, I think he is. Please give him my regards. Conversation two. Would you like some help? Okay. So, we have a conversation between two people. We have a conversation between, uh, let's see, we have a conversation between two people. And they're waiting for a few more people. So we have a picture of three people. We have a picture of a man and a woman at, looks like, some kind of restaurant. And I didn't hear a woman's voice. We have a picture of two men drinking coffee. And we have a picture of a man and a woman in a bus, plane, train, something. So, just based on the voices, it's probably got to be C. And in fact, in the book, it does say, one is C. Let's keep going. Help with the menu? Oh, yes, please. Fine. We're very busy. Canton's still there, isn't he? He's an old friend of mine. Okay, so, uh, John Park was a name. Now, Park is... Of course, a Korean name, but the name is also used in English. So if somebody says the name Park or Lee, uh, they could be Korean, they could be uh, a white person like me, because those names are, are possible in English. Uh, it, therefore, just continue. Uh, yes, I think he is. Please give him my regards. All right, Let's see if I can hold this up here for you. Conversation two. Would you like some help with the menu? Oh, yes, please. What do you recommend? Hmm. Well, why don't you try the chicken curry? It's a local specialty. That sounds good. I'll have the curry then. This is your first visit to Bangkok, isn't it? Yes, it is. What do you think of it? It's very interesting. I hope you have time to visit the Grand Palace. I'm hoping to go there tomorrow. Okay, hey, that one's pretty easy. Conversation three. How long is the flight? I, I think it's eight hours. Are you going to Sao Paulo on business? Yes. We have a contract with a telephone company there. What kind of business are you in? Engineering. We design switching systems. Are you based in California? Yes, in San Bernardino. Really? I went to college in Los Angeles. Okay, so I want to point out that we have somebody with a very, very Spanish accent. And most languages in the world have a similar problem in English. English has two E kinds of sounds, like beat, bit, eat, it, two different sounds. But most countries have only one. So when somebody is from Spain or speaking a Spanish language, they tend to go towards the E version. So, uh, business instead of business. All right, so that's what you could hear. And the other woman sounded quite British. Even though she works in California, she sounds quite English or British or 
maybe Australia and I, I don't make a good distinction between those. But anyway, and they're apparently on a plane or train or something. Conversation four. Mr. Green, I'm Raul Gonzalez, production director. How do you do? And this is Elisa Roca. She's the head of product development here. Pleased to meet you. Welcome to Mexico. Did you have a good trip? It was very nice. Thank you. Could I get you a cup of coffee? No, thanks. I just had some. Well, if it's okay with you, we'll show you around first, and then we can meet in my office. That sounds good. Okay, so pretty easy. There's three of them. And they're standing up and meeting each other for the first time, shaking hands, etc. Now, uh, we will listen to the next audio. But before we do that, if you have the book, <clears throat> you should try to match A, B, C, D, E with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to give you two minutes to look at A, B, C, D, E and match them with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right? Two minutes. Go ahead. Okay, that's something like 90 seconds. So, you've had a chance to match A, B, C, D, E, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go ahead and listen and see if your guesses are correct. Page 10, exercise 2. Listen and check your answers. A. How's it going? Fine. We're very busy. B. Would you like some help with the menu? Oh, yes, please. What do you recommend? C. Are you going to Sao Paulo on business? Yes. We have a contract with a telephone company there. D. Welcome to Mexico. Did you have a good trip? It was very nice. Thank you. E. Could I get you a cup of coffee? No thanks. I just had some. Okay. So, we got... How's it going? This is a very casual, friendly way of talking, right? It's not very formal. How's it going? Fine! Alright, so Koreans tend to want to say, How are you? Fine, thank you. And you is what they learned in first year middle school or, or even in elementary school. And that's not wrong English. Okay, there's nothing improper, there's nothing bad about how are you, fine, thank you, and you. But in my class, I don't want to hear it because I want to hear that you're learning English, that you're stretching boundaries, that you're learning new things, not just recycling the same old stuff. Stuff, stuff, stuff. 
So I want to hear you expand and explore and take chances. If you try something challenging and you don't get it right on your test, there's no minus points. If you do, some, do something challenging, something we taught in class, and you get it right, you get points. If you do something easy that you learned in high school and you get it right, there's no points. Okay, We're trying to grow our English, not just recycle what we already know. So, how's it going? Fine, we're very busy. Excellent, good. Life is great. Okay. How's it going? How are you? Comment, somebody says, how are you doing? And then suddenly people are confused. How are you? How are you doing? Doing? doing what am I doing? I'm, I, I'm doing nothing. No, no. How are you doing is the same as how are you. How are you doing? Not what are you doing. How are you? How are you doing? How is it going? Business or your life? What's happening? I often say, how's life? When I'm talking to friends in a casual setting. Hey, how's life? Or, what's up? Okay? It's just a very friendly, open, casual way to say, how are you? B, would you like some help with the menu? Would you like? Is a yes, no question. Oh, yes, please. Would you like some help? Can you help me? Well, we're more likely to say something like, what do you suggest? What do you recommend? C, are you going to Sao Paulo on business? Are you? Yes, no. Yes, we have a contract with a telephone company there. You don't have to give any details. You just say, yes, we are. If you don't want to talk to somebody on the airplane, you don't have to. But in this class, I'm hoping to see more small talk. I want to see you chatting with other people. So ask friendly little questions, not too personal. And then offer friendly little answers, not too personal. Are you going to uh, Sao Paulo on business? No, it's a vacation. Yes, uh, I. Uh, yes, it's business. How long are you going to be there? Uh, about a week. I'm not talking much. I'll give one more try. Um, are you planning to do any sightseeing? No, just work. Okay, this guy doesn't want to talk to me, so I'm going to shut up. Right. So in our class, I want to see you guys being more open and more friendly. Um, D, welcome to Mexico. Did you have a good trip? It was very nice. It was a good trip? Yeah, it was all right. Oh, man, it was a terrible trip. We we got stuck in Denver, and we had to wait, and, you know, it's it's an open question. We're just, we're worried about you. We want to see that you're in good shape. If it was a bad trip, maybe you need to take a nap. Maybe we should meet after dinner. Uh, maybe we should just delay till tomorrow. And did you have a good trip? Oh, I ate something on the plane. I'm not feeling very good. Okay, well, wow, that's important. Uh, do you want to visit the doctor? Do you want to go lay down? Could I get you a cup of coffee? Can I give you a cup of coffee? It's possible, but get you sounds like I'm not going to make it. It's over in the restaurant. Uh, we have a machine in the corner. Can I get you a cup of coffee? Can I get you a cup of tea? Can I get you a cup of coffee? Uh, it's okay to say no thanks. You don't have to. If you don't want it, you can say, no, thank you. If you say yes, and then he goes to the burden, or he spends the money to get you a cup of coffee, and then you don't drink it, that's kind of bad in Western culture. So it's much better to say, oh, no, thank you, I just had some, or no, my stomach's upset, or no, I'm really full, right? coffee. You, you can say, uh, do you have decaf? I don't drink regular coffee anymore. Or you could say, uh, I'd I prefer tea, or I'd rather have tea if you have it. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Mexico. We have lots of coffee, but tea, not so much. But but you can always ask. If you say it with a smile, nobody will get too hurt. All right? So say yes if you, if you want it or if you'll drink it. But if you won't drink it, say no thanks. I just had some. All right. So that's page 10. Now we're going to 
jump around a little bit because page 11, page 12 are partner work. Uh, page 11 is partner work, and of course there's a, another page for that. And we'll do that in our Zoom class. So I want to look at the bottom of page 11, which again, you should have your book. Page 11 on the bottom is a purple box, and it says Conversation Strategies. And you see, I've got a. Uh, it's hard to draw here. I've got a. I've got a star or a plus or something like that. It's supposed to be a star, all right? And what that is saying is, this is something important. This is the kind of thing I want to hear on your test. When you're testing, I want to hear you talk like this. And this is about small talk. If you go back to the front of the chapter, you remember that one of our objectives was to make small talk. So, small talk. You're from. Korea, aren't you? You're from California, aren't you? You're from the United States, aren't you? Somebody says, you're from Canada, aren't you? And I say, oh, me? No, 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 I'm from California. Okay. So it's okay to say no. We're just trying to talk about things that are not very important. I don't want to say, you have a girlfriend, don't you? That's a little bit more personal. After I know you a little bit, maybe I'll say that. But in our first meeting, I don't want to talk like that. So you're from Korea, aren't you? You're from Daegu, aren't you? No, I'm from Ando. Oh, okay. Is this your first visit to Daegu? Nah, nah, I've been here a lot. Somebody could ask me, oh, you're you're going to Gyeongju. Is it your first visit to Gyeongju? No, I used to work in Gyeongju. I worked there for 10 years. So, uh, is this your first visit to... We're just asking friendly things, not too personal. Do you like kimchi? How many times have I been asked that? Do you like kimchi? And I'll say, what kind? Did you know Kim Korea has 1,000 kinds of kimchi? I think that's right. Is it 500 or 1,000? I read somewhere. Yeah. So many different kinds of kimchi. And actually, I don't like my mother-in-law's kimchi. Uri Jangwonim kimchi. It's too spicy. I don't like it. I shame shameful, but I go to the store to buy kimchi. I do. I eat, I eat kimchi at home. I eat kimchi probably, oh, four, five, six times a week. Um, had a little bit of kimchi tonight. Uh, my wife is Korean, so we, we eat a lot of Korean food at home. Probably, she prefers it. She would rather eat Korean food uh, 18, 19 times in a week, right? If we have 21 meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, she would probably prefer to eat Korean food 19 times out of the week, probably. Uh, jajangmyeon, does that count as Korean? I don't know. Um, but me, I, I eat Korean food. I usually skip a couple of breakfasts. And often my breakfast is a piece of toast, just plain bread in the toaster, toaster with margarine, or a bagel, or a banana. So that doesn't really count. But if we count lunch and dinner, I would say I eat Korean food um, 2 times 7 is 14, so probably 10 or 11 times in the week is Korean, or some kind of like, kind of a fusion Korean. Uh, is Donkas Korean? Well, Donkas kind of came from Japan, Japan kind of took it from somewhere in the West, I don't know. So is that really Korean? That's hard to say. But yeah, I, I eat rice uh, 10 times a week, 9 times, 10 times a week probably, rice. And uh, I eat kimchi probably almost every day. I had kimchi for dinner. I had uh, kimchi and dubu. It wasn't really uh, dubu kimchi. It wasn't really designed that way. But there was kimchi on the table and there was dubu on the table. And I kind of took a little kimchi, put it with the dubu and ate it. It was my mother-in-law's kimchi. I don't like it very much. So I had to cut it and mix it. And I had rice and I had kim. And what else did I have tonight? Rice and kim. Um, tonight was kind of a little bits of lots of things. There was some leftover from earlier in the week and from lunch. So there wasn't any one big main thing. Ah, ah, ah. There was a kind of like an odengu kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, I call it odeng. My daughter calls it the omok. omok. Uh, my daughter insists on using the word omok. I used to call it odeng. But anyway. Um, it was just kind of a, a bunch of stuff. But, uh, yeah, I eat kimchi. Um, 
and I red kimchi, but I like it more sour, more pickly, not so hot. You enjoy kimchi, don't you? You like, do you, do you like, you enjoy, right? Now, be careful with enjoy, because enjoy is used a little bit differently than like. Enjoy sounds like more things you do. Uh, you enjoy reading. You enjoy swimming. We don't really say you enjoy kimchi or you enjoy uh, hamburgers. like it's not exactly wrong but it sounds weird so we don't really say you enjoy uh, enjoy doing enjoy doing think of ing verbs so you enjoy playing tennis you enjoy riding a bicycle you enjoy watching movies tell me do you follow follow means to keep track of to uh not just watch one game but to kind of like think about a team or a player that you want to know about every time they perform, every time they they go, uh, you know, every time they play a game. Could be, do you follow uh, a TV drama? You know, what drama is on, and it comes every week, or it comes every day, and it's not just that you watch it, but you kind of want to know more about who's doing what, and if it's a series, how is the series going, what's the next thing that's going to happen, you start talking to your friends about, oh, did you see this, oh, this, I saw that, and it's going to happen, and, oh, no, I don't think it's going to, so do you follow, do you keep track, and, of course, the very safe, what about you, what about you, so I say something, and, oh, do you follow soccer, uh, a little bit, not too much. I don't really have a team except there is a Mexican League team next to San Diego uh, in Tijuana. And uh, I, I kind of follow the, the, the Zolos um, from Tijuana, but not too much. But what about you? Do you watch, do you follow sports? And somebody say, oh yeah, I'm a big fan of Samsung Lions. Oh, Lions, I don't like the Lions. See. I live in Miriam, which is Kyungsung Namdo, so I'm a fan of Lotte, 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 Lotte Giants. Um, but that's okay. Uh, Lotte was terrible last year. So, um, again, in my book, this Conversation Strategies has a star on it. I want to say that again. So you want to uh, work on this. This is the kind of stuff I want to hear on your test. And this is not hard. These are short little things. And it means not working from a script like you say this and I say that, but being able to be more dynamic and interrupt and da 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 da. Oh, really? Did you? So don't be shy. All right, so the last part of this class is page 12, which is a reading Global Communication. And once again, my page has a star on it. Uh, Nick the camera, I gotta get used to working in the mirror. There's a star on it. And that means the information on this page can be on your test. Now, I actually have a lot of stuff on this page. Um, and I will put a note on the Haksabjario that refers to it quickly. But if you don't take notes, during this lecture, you won't get everything. Because I'm not going to put everything on the Hux of Jario. Because I want you to take notes in my classes. Now, I'm not kind. The title is The Art of the Business Lunch. So, think about art versus science. Art versus science. Well, we know what science is. Science is when you test something and test something and you find a, a rule, a theory that you can use again and again and again. Art doesn't mean just painting. Art means things that are more from the heart, not from the scientific brain. Okay? Music. Yeah, we write it and there are some rules to music, but mostly music comes from the heart. And we have to follow certain kinds of rules, but basically from the heart. So that would be an art. So when we talk about the art of the business lunch, we say, yes, there are some rules, there are some good manners, there are some good ideas, but still, a lot of it comes to uh, this you and me 
together finding a way. So we're going to talk about the business lunch as an art, but we're going to talk about it understanding that there are some basic rules. Just like when you paint, you know that uh, yellow plus red equals orange, right? There are certain rules that you can't really cheat. So I'm going to read it for you. I hope you have the book. You can read with me. The business lunch is an excellent way to improve a relationship with a client. Hmm, what's a client? We talked about that last time, right? However, since eating is a very social thing, it's easy to get distracted. So plan what you would like to discuss, just like a business meeting. Wait, 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 wait. what is distracted? Distracted means your attention is taken away from what you want to do. I'm talking to you, we're talking about business, and there's a beautiful girl walking over there, and I'm distracted. <gasps> Whoa, I forget completely what we're talking about because that girl was so beautiful. So, distracted. It's easy to get distracted with beautiful food and deliciousness and a nice wine, and you forget that you're supposed to do business. Think of it like a business meeting. Plan what you want to discuss. It helps to think about the business lunch as having a specific beginning, middle, and end. Begin with a minute or two of small talk. Hey, nice to see you. How are you doing? Uh, you, you follow baseball, don't you? How are the Samsung Lions doing now? Right? Just friendly talk, nothing too terribly important. For one or two minutes. Then jump into business. Then talk about business until the food arrives. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we've got this plan and, and here's the, the contract the way it's looking and, and are you sure you can do three hundred and sixty uh, units in only two days? Uh, do we need to adjust that a little bit? Okay. Talk about business until the food arrives. When the food comes Put the papers away. During the meal, put away the paperwork and focus on getting to know your client. Now we're back to the social side. Okay. Um, Koreans tend to put a lot of attention into the personal side. Japanese tend to put a lot of attention into the personal side. Much more than many Western companies, many Western businessmen. Okay. But we do pay attention to the personal side because we know often in business the difference between my company and your company might be very very little I want to win the contract and you want to win the contract so when we're talking to Mr. X each of us needs to make that personal connection so that Mr. X will choose us because there's not much difference but I feel good about Robert I think Robert's going to be a good partner I think I can trust Robert I want to do business with Robert even though Joe deal is just as good, maybe a tiny bit better, looks like. A tiny bit better, but I trust Robert more. So personal side can be important. During the meal, put away your paperwork and focus on getting to know your client. Avoid food that is messy or difficult to eat. Listen, certain food is delicious. But it's really hard to eat and you don't want to look like a fool because you can't eat it well. You drop it, you try to cut it and it flies off to the other table, right? You want to keep your, your decorum. You want to keep looking like you're sophisticated. So uh, chicken breast, right? Takasamsal has no bone. And so it's a very common food at business meetings. It's not maybe the best food, but it's easy to eat. It's easy to cut, right? But chicken in the bone, like chicken leg, you have to pick it up and eat it like this, and you don't look good. Or you try to cut it with a knife and a fork, and then... Spaghetti, jajangmyeon, right? Maybe you like it, but you eat it and... It sounds bad, and the, the little splatters of tomato sauce or jajang sauce get on your white shirt. Right? It's the wrong food to eat for business. Avoid food that is messy or difficult to eat. It makes you look bad. 
Next paragraph, the person who does the inviting should pay for the meal. In Korea, we see these kind of like arguments about, oh, I'm giving it to, I'm going to pay. No. That's, that's not how we do things in the West. Who invites, that's who should pay. If you think your client will insist on paying, pay the bill in advance. Give them your credit card in advance. Arrive earlier than your guest. If you have a meeting set for 7, be there at 6.45. Because that way, if they come at 6.50, you're still first. You should be able to greet them and say, Hi, hi, good to see you. Right? Not there waiting for you. Arrive earlier than your guest. Do not order anything while you are waiting for them. Don't sit in the bar and drink. Don't sit at the table and start eating chicken nuggets or chips or whatever while you wait for them. That looks not kind. Just wait. When the guests arrive, stand up and shake hands. And I usually talk about shaking hands and uh, EPA 1. In this class I'll just say, shake hands means firmly. Put your hand in there. Grab it so it doesn't just fall off. You're not just like touching. Right? Get in there hand all the way in, hand to hand, grab it, shake it, done. Hi, nice to meet you, good to see you. Two or three seconds. Hi, nice to meet you, good to see you, done. Stand up and shake hands. Don't sit unless your leg is broken. If they are late, wait about 15 minutes before you telephone their office. Now this is an old book and nowadays everybody has a cell phone so it shouldn't be a big deal. But even then they may be driving right a little bit late, traffic is bad, parking is difficult. Don't call when they're two minutes late. Wait until 15 minutes and then call. Say hey uh, I'm, I'm waiting at the restaurant. Are, are you gonna make it today? Oh man I forgot. Or yeah, yeah I'm just down the street uh, just walking in. We came in on the on the uh, subway and got pushed aside so yeah okay so don't make a big deal just give them a call to make sure that they know and they're on the way or if there's a problem last paragraph the three hour power lunch three hours one two three hours power dun, 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 power the three hour power lunch has largely disappeared in North America. The three hour power lunch was the lunch that took three hours and we have long meetings and we often drink. That's basically gone. That was a product of the 60s and the 70s. Early 80s it's still kind of around but by the late 1980s it was fading. By the 1990s basically gone. Largely disappeared in North America. Nowadays the appropriate length for the business lunch is about one and a half hours. Okay, 90 minutes. That's enough time to, to have a little chat, do a little business, eat together, and after you finish eat, you can sit and drink coffee and kind of roll back towards business. A shorter, one and a half hours is a shorter, more productive meeting that still leaves time for work afterwards. You finish your lunch, you go back to the office and work. Now, it wasn't that long ago that people had a lunch they met at 12.30 for lunch. It was a three-hour lunch. By the time you get back to the lunch, by the time you get back to the office, it's 4 p.m. and there's no time to get anything done. And if you were drinking, there's no brains to get anything done. So, mind that. Now, what I do when I do this kind of reading is that I usually kill some time from the reading before we do the quiz. The reason I do that is I want to get your brain kind of busy. Then you do the questions, you're kind of like, oh, it's, it's harder. Yeah, I'm not kind. I push you. I want to improve your English by making things more challenging. So, uh, I'm only going to talk very quickly about these key words. Um, we talk about here the business lunch, and we talked about the three-hour power lunch. Well, I'm going to give you a bunch of words here. I hope you write them down. I'm going to do it very quickly on, on the Haksapjario after this. We have things 
We have basically five kinds of eating. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper, and snack. So snack means something small to eat before or after meals, but is not considered a proper meal. Okay, so we have breakfast. Breakfast means break fast. The fast means not eating. So the time you didn't eat from the time you went to bed until your first meal of the new day, that is all fasting. So your first meal of the new day is breakfast. Unlike in Korea and some other countries, breakfast in America, England, France is different food than lunch or dinner, right? You go to McDonald's in the morning, they've got Egg McMuffins and Sausage McMuffins and pancakes, you call hotcakes, right? Which is not considered to be normal food for the rest of the day. But I love breakfast. I often eat breakfast late at night. Bacon, eggs, sausage, pancakes. Um, but the key point is breakfast means the first meal of the day. Lunch means around the middle of the day. 12 o'clock typically. Now if you have a night job, you work at the company from midnight till 8 a.m., you might say your lunch is 4, 4 a.m. because it's middle of your shift, but most people think lunch means middle of the day. Then we have two words, dinner and supper, and this is a little confusing because people use them different ways. Think about it this way. Supper is the last meal in the day. Supper is the last meal in the day. You could have supper at midnight. Midnight supper. Okay. So last meal of the day, before you go to bed. Uh, it doesn't mean right before you go to bed, but it's the last real meal. You could have a snack later. Dinner means the big meal of the day, the main meal of the day. So, for example, in my father's house, we usually only talked about supper, I only talked about dinner. We only talked about dinner on big holidays like Easter and Christmas, and maybe on Sunday. And then dinner was usually in the afternoon, one o'clock. We didn't have a lunch, we just had dinner. But many families routinely have dinner at 7 p.m. Whatever, dinner is the big meal of the day. When we kind of expect and hope all the family will come together and the meal is more delicious, there's more side dishes, that's dinner. So, for example, you could have breakfast and then have lunch at office or at school or whatever come home and have dinner with your husband or wife and family at uh, 7 p.m. 8 p.m. and then go out to a show go out to a movie and it's midnight and you're hungry but you don't just want a little snack so then you have a late night supper and then you go to the norebang and you sing and then you and you know, then you have a snack at 2 a.m. because you're hungry again. So, dinner means the main meal of the day. Supper means the last meal of the day. And snack means when you're eating something less than a meal. In Korea, you often say snacks to mean more like, kind of like kaja. But snacks can be fruit. Snacks can be a, a cup of yogurt. Cookies. Uh, even maybe... A little sandwich because it's, I'm not thinking it's my meal it's just I'm hungry and I'm not going to eat for a couple of hours so I need to eat something I like to eat things like uh, jack crackers uh, banana and as I said I often have a banana for breakfast okay so we have these five kinds of eating breakfast lunch dinner supper and snack and we also have these adjectives these uh, words that go in front that modify the meaning. So it could be light. A light breakfast means not too much food. Or a light lunch, a light dinner, a light supper, or a light 
dinner is a little bit strange because dinner is the big meal of the day and light means uh, less food. For some people it means less calories. Um, you know, I'm eating light. But usually it means just, just less food. So a light breakfast, a light lunch, a light supper, a light snack. Less food? And, and with less food should be less calories. A power breakfast, a power lunch, a power dinner. Power suggests we're doing business. Yeah, I'm wearing my tie. I'd make a deal. Okay, so a power breakfast means companies that come together uh, or businessmen that come together at maybe 7 a.m. We're at a we're at a seminar in another city and we meet. Or I'm traveling city to city to city and I and and the schedules are tough. And so why don't we have a a, a breakfast meeting at uh, 7:30 a.m. We can meet at my hotel or we can meet somewhere else. Uh, a power breakfast. It means basically a business meal. Power breakfast, power lunch, power dinner. Power supper would be kind of strange because again supper is probably uh, later and uh, not so big. It's possible. Um, sometimes we talk about a three martini lunch. Martini is not really a popular drink anymore. Uh, it was more popular in the 50s and 60s, maybe early 70s with businessmen. Uh, I don't even know how to make one. I've had a couple of them, didn't care for it. Uh, James Bond had martinis shaken, not stirred, right? So, um, but if we say something like a three martini lunch, it doesn't really mean you have to drink martini, but it means there's a lot of alcohol. And it means when you go back to the office, uh, you probably have no brains. Some business people are really into drinking, but the drink culture has really gone down in the West. Companies don't want to pay for alcohol and they don't want their workers to become alcoholics and they don't want their workers to come back to the office and have no no brains and they don't want somebody to make a deal that's a bad deal because they were drunk. So the three martini lunch, the idea of a lot of alcohol at lunch has really gone away. Uh, three martini breakfast, Ooh, sounds weird. Three martini dinner, no it's just, it's just a three martini lunch. Then, of course, we could always have late, a late breakfast, a late lunch, a late dinner, a late supper. Uh, and, of course, it could be early, too. Let's have an early lunch. Let's have an early breakfast. Uh, it's going to be a long day. Can we meet at 5.30 a.m.? Oh, I don't know if the hotel breakfast... Uh, check. Oh, well, they have room service at 5.30, but the restaurant's not open until 6.30. Okay, why don't you come up to my room at 5.30 and we'll have breakfast. That way we can get out and do what we want to do. So you could have an early breakfast or an early dinner. And finally, sometimes we talk about midnight, midnight supper we talked about, or a midnight snack. A midnight breakfast is possible. Like I said, when I was young and uh, I used to go to nightclubs a lot. Yeah, really, I did. I sang in the nightclubs and I went out with friends. Uh, we got out of the nightclub at uh, 1 30 a.m. 2 a.m. and uh, I'm kind of hungry so let's go have a midnight breakfast so those are the five meal or eating breakfast lunch dinner supper snack and the common adjectives or modifiers the words we use in front to give a little bit different meaning light power three martini business late midnight all right let's check the what you should and shouldn't do at a business lunch from the reading see i told you i'm going to take you away and distract you plan what you would like to discuss before a business lunch yes or no plan what you'd like to discuss well the book says yes the book has a check mark in it now just like with any toic test or toefl test or any kind of reading test forget about what you know from the real world the answer is whatever is in the right whatever is in the writing okay don't worry about what you know give the test the answer they want b make small talk for a long time before discussing business yes or no well no make small talk for a couple of minutes one or a minute or two of small talk and then talk about business it says c Order a meal that isn't difficult to eat. Yes or no? 
Yes, avoid food that is messy or difficult to eat. D. It's okay to be late if you are the one inviting. No, it's never okay to be late, but especially not if you're inviting. Remember, when you invite, you're there first, and you pay the bill. E. It's okay to order a drink while you wait for your guest. No, don't order anything until they come. F. If your guests are late, you should leave the restaurant after 15 minutes. Well, that's not what it said. What it said is, don't call the other side until 15 minutes. So, definitely don't leave until you've talked to them. Or, you know, if it's more than 30 minutes and you've tried to call and there's no answer, well, then maybe, but I'd probably still wait a little bit more. Okay, the bottom of the page says, discuss the questions. Do you agree? Yes or no? Uh, and that is the exact kind of question I could ask on the midterm test. So, uh, should you order while you're waiting for your guest at a restaurant? No. Really? Why not? Is that is that Korean style? And, and at that point, it's up to you. It's up to your thinking, and you can say what you think. There's, there's no uh, correct version. We, we talk about what's in the book and then tell me what you think. Because in some things, I know Korean more than you, probably, because I've been here in the business sector. I've been working, meet, had lots of business meetings. But in some things, you know more than me. By the way, if we go out to eat samgyeopsal, you're cutting it, because I'm terrible at cutting the samgyeopsal. Uh, and the other thing, talk about what advice would you give to visiting colleagues? Remember, a colleague is somebody you work with, or in your mind you work with. It's probably professional level. People wear a tie, not the chunks of ajima. Uh, uh, a colleague might not be working in your same company. It might be somebody who has a similar field of work, and you meet, and you feel like you're partners in work, even though you work for different companies, maybe competing companies. But you have the mind that, well, we're, we're both professionals, we both work in this field, and who knows, in five years I might change jobs, you might change jobs, we might be working together at a different company. What advice would you give a visiting colleague about business meals in your company, in your country? Hey, in Korea, what kind of advice would you give? Uh, you know, what things should we know? Korea definitely is different eating. Uh, if you go to a lot of the gogi jeeps where uh, somebody has to cook and cut and you know they give you a uh, cloth and that uh, thing that bothers me the most I guess is that I don't like to eat lots and lots and lots of, of meat and then the rice and the denjang comes uh, uh, American style we tend to put everything on the table and eat a little this a little that a little this then back to that then back to this right so if you're only eating meat and then only eating rice and then only eating vegetables people think you're weird now at the beginning of the meal they will serve a salad and they will serve a soup before other things come because we kind of have an order for these beginning things but then when the entree comes it's not just meat it will come out with meat and potato and vegetable, at least three things on a plate. Typically, there's at least three things on a plate. Um, if it's a buffet, that's a little bit different. But still, we don't expect you to sit and eat one thing and then go and then eat one thing. There are certain things that come early, and there are certain things that come end, like ice cream at the end, right? The desserts come at the end. Little kids always want to go eat the, 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 the puddings and the cakes before they eat their rice and fried chicken or whatever it is they eat when they go to a buffet. Uh, one thing that's quite different, another thing that's quite different is in America we usually drink as we eat. And if you go to a place like Vips or... or TGI Fridays or whatever, you know, when you order, they bring the, the cola or whatever, 
along with the meal or before the meal. But in Korean dining, usually the water is the drink, and it comes after you've eaten. And that's just weird for me, because I want to drink while I eat. The food makes me thirsty. And if the food is spicy, that's even more important, right? So, we're done with page 12, when we do our Zoom class on Thursday morning at 10.30, after Election Day. I'm going to sneeze. We're going to look uh, at uh, page uh, 11, and we're going to listen to the messages, the numbers on the messages on page 13. Get your book. I'm done for the night. Thank you very much for joining me. Okay.